I like to do a lot of innovative things with electric fencing because I think that I think it saves me a lot of money. Right here, an electric gateway saves me a couple hundred bucks minimum, more than that. But the turn off switch did not energize the I think gate. We got some hungry kids here. Okay, let's check, see what we got here. Cleaning it up pretty good. Um, it's like some wild carrot in the second cutting grass. They're spreading around. They don't really like that too much. You see here the alfalfa, first cutting alfalfa bale clean up good. It's really easy to give them too much, you know, because you're like, oh, maybe I don't have the wire. I got to put it a little bit closer, but it's really easy to give them too much, and then they can easily waste it. But you see here, you come back, make them clean it up, and uh, sometimes don't move the wire every day and let them really clean it up. You see right here, this is what I'm talking about. Look at that. Get right down here. And when they're not trampling it in the ground, they probably are lapping all that leaf up with their tongue that is um, falling in the mud when they pull the bale out. When they go to high grade it and they pull the hay out a mouthful, you've got to think a lot of the hay shaft, which is the leaf and the seed, which is going to have the highest nutritional value is falling down in the mud around those round bale feeders like here. At least that's what I'm guessing, and it makes me feel better to think that's what's going on. I, sometimes I'll have a backup bale in uh, a hay ring, and what this is is just a low-quality first-cutting bale, and they really won't eat it unless they get real hungry because these are feeder cattle, so these need to be on the best hay I've got. And, uh, but if you're worried about metering not enough hay, did I put enough, give them enough access with that wire, just have a, have a, have a back bale, which is just a, uh, you know, first cut. But you can see what they did. They high graded that, pulled hay out. And, uh, Cable asked me what the term high grading is. I just, I kind of adopted that from, I don't know. High gradings used in other terms in other industries. So I don't know where I came up with that, but it sounded good to me. Right here, look at that. That's what you want. And they learn the mama cows are much better than the yearlings. They get on their knees and bend under that. You can also adjust the wire height too, okay? So you want to go up. Good to go. Another bale feeding corral right here, operating off a portable Cyclops fence charger. And here I did it different. I set the bales with their radius towards the fence, so as they get eight, they roll back. So I've got a square corral here. They can enter and eat from both sides. This is for the mama cows. On this side, I got higher quality hay, which this is the crabgrass, clover, fescue, foxtail, fall panicum hay, which they absolutely love this stuff. And you can see, look at they clean that right up. No waste at all. Look at that. So I'm feeding from two two opposite sides of it. I have two wires here along the side of the corral on each side so that this has its own guy wire and the other side has its own guy wire. That way you're not overstressing one strand of poly wire because they can, they can take it down, particularly if the calves get caught up in it. You know, they're always going to play havoc on stuff. This is more like a orchard grass straw I did in the fall. Kind of garbage hay. And um, so I'm letting them just tear into it, give them plenty of access to low quality hay so they can go through and high grade the hay. Uh, you can see there's, there's the foxtail, 
fall panicum, uh, clover hay from the new seeding in there. They just dug right into that. And hardly any waste and that bale rolls back. That's probably a, a better way to do it. You don't even, it, but if you're gonna put the bales with the radius towards the wire, put a high density of, density of them a lot closer so they got like a continuous feed line. And as they eat, the bale just rolls back out of the way. A little bit less labor, really. I think I'm going to set them all up that way. And then what I'll do here, you can see a little bit nicer quality bale. They kind of dug in this, but a lot of straw. So I'm, I'm giving them a good access to this. And then it's kind of mixed with good quality hay, this new seeding stuff with clover, which they really dig. They're going into that and then it's kind of mixed with the low quality hay so and then i'm going to move this whole corral to another spot on the farm so i'll move this all over this farm in multiple spots during the winter and start managing feeding my hay this way not have to start that thing up every day i got bale staged here so on a good warm day i start the tractor up and start hauling bales, set up another corral. Got asked by cable about how I make these portable posts. It's basically a tire. Tires are good because they don't freeze into the ground. And just weld some tubing. I got the fiberglass rod, byproduct from the oil industry. And over here, I got some smaller rods. I don't know if these are like a 3 8 rod. These I got from a buddy of mine. He's a mechanic. This is these are from bucket trucks from inside the boom. So I'll pick up fiberglass anywhere I can. These rods I had to purchase. But yeah, just could be a little bit. I feel I can fine-tune and manage my hay wastage. Cause I got kind of alarmed. I used to feed this way all the time years ago, and I need to really go back to this. It's a lot easier way to feed well, I, I am unrolling some hay down the slope too on days i start the tractor up i'll i'll throw three or four down down the slope in various spots made some uh portable fence posts sort of out of the um packer wheels too but those will freeze you got the height over there tall enough for the calves to uh creep you know like a creep feeder i just make it tall enough they can go under without a problem so they don't get caught up and tear my wire down.